Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode number 694, and the topic today is, are you confusing sex with love? And the answer to that was grow up. I was being a bit pedantic, or, <laughs> or blunt, as we say. Before I jump into the topic at hand and, and explain what it's about, let me explain who I am and what I'm about. Um, welcome to my daily broadcast, by the way. This is my Facebook Live. I do it at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day, right here. If you're watching it elsewhere, I'll give you the links for why you can find it there and this later on. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I should probably tell you that in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. I am a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which drives my work in helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And also what inspired my talks I do every day now on Facebook called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart, or MFTM for short. <laughs> so I can make you more room for the titles. And so... Over two years now, I've done over 600, and, well, as of today, 694 broadcasts. So quite a few, hitting 700 next week. Another milestone. And the topic today is really about the conf confusion between sex and love. Hence the title, are you confused? Are you confusing sex for love and you should grow up? And I mean this from the point of view of maturity, not necessarily age, because there are people out there I know who are thinking sex is the priority of a relationship and they're in their 50s. So it's not about chronological age, it's a maturity point. But let me break it down a bit more this way. For a lot of us, and I include myself in this, at a younger age, you know, early 20s, maybe, maybe late teens, but for most of us, maybe early 20s, our primary relationship drive at the time was sex. So, hi Sue, nice to see my broadcast. Um, as always, I look forward to connecting more as we get into the course coming up next week. Um, and we'll talk more about that offline. <laughs> Sorry, sidetrack completely, back on track. So we are in this, um, um, sorry, in early 20s, I have to remember where I was, and I was like, that's where I left my marker. I need bookmarks in my head sometimes. <laughs> so as, as, uh, as young um, new lovers, new relationship partners, we tend a lot of times to conflate love and sex. And so when we have sex, we think we're in love, and when we don't have sex, we think we're not in love, which at that age is, excusable however as we mature like a few years later ideally we start understanding there's a lot more to a relationship than just sex because as much as sex is great I have no argument with sex it's a great thing to have it's not the be all and end of a relationship now I'm just speaking personally I've had some relationships that were just sex and nothing else and I should say they didn't last that long because sex alone does not sustain a healthy relationship the thing about love and I use this a lot in my work, I was nicknamed the love doctor for a long time by my clients, is that love really is a multifaceted jewel, perhaps? A multi multi multifaceted thing of which sex is one of the facets. But love has a lot more, com more complexity to that. And also in a relationship, it's a much more inclusive faculty. And when you want to be in a healthy relationship, love is more important, yes, more important than sex. Because again, sex is part of love, not the other way around. Although it's easy to have sex without love. I tried to do that, it didn't work for me. That was my own experience because my body would not line up energetically. This is a little admission when I was in, oh, I was just turning 21 in fact, where without a connection, intimacy, I didn't know at the time what was going on. I thought I wasn't functional. But it turned out when I didn't have the line up energetically for love, I couldn't have sex. So that was like the thing. So, hey Catherine, I haven't seen you for a while. Nice to see you from Germany watching my broadcast. It's almost a bit late for you tonight, isn't it? Um, rewind thoughts, sorry, I'm distracted because the funny thing was I was living in Hamburg at the time when this happened, so Germany came straight to mind, interesting so I am aware from a visceral experience for me that sex doesn't work without love but however, I believe that sex is part of love as the thought of conversation so love, as I mentioned, is a multifaceted thing I don't want to use it necessarily a jewel because that's too poetic perhaps and within that, sex is one of the components of that but also intimacy, communication, safety, affection, support, all these other things are part of what I think love is. Love is a, sorry, I just had a flash, I do this, this happens to me. I just had a flash of a song, which is love is a many splendid thing. I don't remember saying that. But of course, I, my mind, you want to come inside my mind sometimes? It's not as crazy as Robin Williams was, but it was certainly picks up interesting things. But love is a many splendid thing because love is more than just simply sex. It's more than just connection. And I'm talking about relationship romantically speaking because 
there's love in friendship, there's love in family, there's love in other areas too. But I'm talking about the romantic setting because since sex is usually only with your partner, not with your friends or family, I hope not, there's definitely a con an inclusion where sex is part of the romantic relationship as is the love in the context I'm speaking from. So from my point of view, and of course this is all personal because I'm speaking from my knowledge and insight and experience, not from, and from my client's experiences, but not from reading something, love is the real focus for a relationship. And in fact, a relationship, especially if it's a long-term relationship, has to have love within it, because it basically will not sustain without it. I've seen relationships where the loving died 20 years prior, but they stayed together because of the kids. Now that's a love of the kids, so it's still love, but very um, incomplete. So having connection, thank you, Catherine. Sometimes, sometimes I'm very funny, but it always makes, seems to make sense. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you for that. I like it a lot. Um, I do my best to be honest and, and transparent. So my humor is kind of my, part of my nature. The truth for love is that it really requires a higher level because sex is easy to do. It's just two bodies bumping connection. Great, done. But the thing is, love requires a higher calling, a higher connection, and a higher willingness to dive in deeper because real love is basically a place to be very vulnerable. It's like ripping open the shielding to be seen and to see more clearly. And that, for me, is what the fundamental part of a healthy relationship is, is that ability to dive that deep so you see each other as your pure essence, in a way. If you want to get spiritual, it could be a soul connection if you want to go that deep. I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying love is beyond that. So those sort of conversations transcend just sex. Again, not excluding it, but being more than it. And again, I'm very clear about the fact that sex is a healthy part of a relationship, but it's not the only thing for a relationship. And sometimes a relationship cannot... I don't know if it's, um, let me just, sorry, I'm rewinding a second. Sex or... This is... Okay, I'm going to throw this out and see if it lands. So I'm not promising this is accurate. But I'm just thinking for myself, if a relationship can survive without love, or if it can survive without sex, I would say that a relationship can survive without sex, but it can't survive without love. However, a lot of romantic relationships fail when there's no sexual connection. It doesn't mean necessarily having sex. It means having that sexual um, polarity, which I've talked about before on other broadcasts, where the chemistry is such that you're very attracted to each other. It doesn't mean you have to consummate it all the time. But the fact you have that sexual polarity, additionally to the love, makes a much healthier relationship. So without that, without love, that polarity alone doesn't keep you going. Because the truth is for me, in some ways, sexual attraction, it's an interesting thought. Hmm. Let, me, let me throw this one out as an experiment. Sexual attraction is not monogamous, but loving intimacy is. I'm just sorry, I'm just, I'm just putting it on the table. So let me back it up a second. I was looking at the perspective of what if Romantic love is you you save for one person in monogamous connection. I'm talking about monogamy, not polyamory for some people who have that focus. But sexual attraction doesn't necessarily be tied to one person. For men, I think that's true. And I know there's a whole conversation about how men are much more, have a wandering eye than women do. But I believe in some senses we can be sexually attracted to somebody who we're not in a relationship with as long as we don't do anything about it if we are in a relationship. Whereas we have a loving, deep connection of pure passion, depth, and expression with just one person. So I suspect, I'm, fe I'm just, fe uh, just so you know, that's not my truth, I'm just exploring that one right in front of you. Welcome to my world. But again, putting back to the, to the core message about this, if you have sex and love conflicted or um, confused or conflicted, you may want to look at what your choices are. Now, if you, again, if you're very young and you're exploring relationship for a very early time and you've actually had sex for early on and it's driving it, great. That's okay, but be aware there's more to relationship than just sex. And if you're beyond your early 20s, definitely I advise you, I recommend, I encourage you, I say to you to look for more than just the intimacy of physical connection. Because for most people, sex is just physical connection. Yes, there are conversations about deeper connections Excuse me. Where sex is um, more spiritual because it's more intimate, and has a more of a it connects all, all the chakras and is all energy connection and everything else. So that's that's another option. But again, that requires a deeper connection than just purely, you know, knocking boots, so to speak. Sorry, it's a, sorry, a quote, a comment from Catherine. A relationship can't really can't really or simply survive when only physical stuff might be the basic. So how should, yeah, I think it, yeah, I do get it. 
And that's the thing is when you, when you're when the when the sex is just physical, that's not enough either. For me, a healthy relationship, and I and I took this way myself in my own languaging, is that that intimate act is actually called I use it saying making love, because sex is a clinical description of the act of being together. But I think making love is the actual description of the energetic connection that two people have when they're having a sexual experience. That's my preference. So it still ties love into everything. Because again, sex is part of love, but love is not, but, but as in sex is part of the love experience, but love is much bigger than just sex. I'm just gonna say something else then, it doesn't fit. So I'm hoping this is making some sense because really it is that simple in a way is that love is a deeper expression of connection, of intimacy, of wonder, of exploration, of joy, of celebration, which you can also have from sex in a way, but reality again is that the love is a bigger experience, a bigger expression, and a, um, a greater place to play in a relationship. If you're in a relationship without love, I recommend leaving. It doesn't matter how great the sex is. If you're in a relationship without sex, but you have the love, I would get some help. So that's the, my point is that way. If your relationship doesn't have love but it has sex, that's a way out. If you have a relationship with love without sex, if you have a relationship that is love without sex, there's a way in. Meaning you can do things to support the sexual chemistry and connection. Now, at the same time, or in addition to this, for some people, that sexual connection can fade over time because they've been together with a partner for so long or they've gotten so comfortable with it. This is one of the experiences I had myself in a relationship. I didn't know at the time this is a piece you can learn from. So. Part of what makes sex work is chemistry. Now that's a very banded about term and does involve some chemical reactions and chemical connections, but I believe there's something more than that. And I was just sharing that I had an interview yesterday, which I posted on my wall, a, a, um, a, pod, a what was it, a podcast? It was a video interview. So I believe personally that in the intimacy of sex, it's actually created not just by chemistry, but by polarity. And I've talked about this many times before, but I'm bringing it out in mean, this topic because it's relevant here, is that when two people get together, and again, this is people because I'm not talking about genders here, there's a polarity of masculine and feminine energies that are like poles on a magnet. If you are, for example, looking at two magnets, you put them together, you put North Pole to North Pole, they repel from each other. And if there's no magnetism, they don't do anything. But if you put North and South Pole together, they attract very strongly. That's the power of magnetism. Polarity in adult human relationship is a key parallel to that. Meaning that when we are in our polar, in, in our, in our polar, I'm sorry. The way I describe it is like there's a spectrum of polarity from masculine to feminine or feminine to masculine, however you put it. And we all carry some of each in us. Whether you're gay or straight, doesn't make a difference. We carry a blend of both energies. We tend to reside more naturally towards one end of the spectrum or the other. Again, independent of gender, because the generality is men are more masculine, women are more feminine, but it's not always true. But it's the polarity extremes of masculine to feminine that creates the chemistry, meaning that the more extremely, um, or the more at the end of the extremes of the spectrum, sorry, I'm sure my hands are on camera, of masculine to feminine, means that there's more chemical juice that pulls you together in a relationship. So it's that magnetism. So if you are in a relationship that's been going on for a long time and maybe the juice has faded, you might need to spend more time apart to rebuild your own polarity. You may have gotten so neutral in your polarity, you've come together so many times. It's like when you leave magnets and draw together for too long, they lose the magnetism. There's no, there's no, there's no connection there because they've been together too long. For some people, this requirement is that they need to do things that rebuild their polarity. So for men, doing things like getting out with other men and doing sports or comp competitive stuff can be very helpful. For women, doing things that are more relaxing, renewing of their um, feminine energies, which could be um, going to the spa, doing yoga, some other things that connect them back to their bodies. So that's one way of rebuilding, uh, rebuilding polarity, which then in turn rebuilds your chemistry. So if you have a relationship that's been going for a long time and you love each other deeply, but the chemistry has been a bit shaky, rebuild your polarity, I believe, and I have firmly about this, will help you rebuild your chemistry. And that will give you your drive back. If that doesn't work, then you won't go see a therapist. And that's out of my range. So. That's giving you some steps if you are in a loving relationship, but sex is not working for you. But I think that's really covered more than I plan to in this topic. So once again, just to um, capture this, can, can wrap this up, or that sign was supposed to mean. <laughs> um, I'm firmly in the belief that we can all have amazing healthy relationships. 
that sex can be part of. But if you're in a relationship, or if you're being asked to be in a relationship because their partner wants sex from you only, walk away. You deserve a healthy relationship. Yes, Catherine, connecting the minds is just exciting. And as long as you connect your heart as well. Connecting minds is wonderful, but connecting heart for me is more of a priority because that brings us even closer together because that creates the intimacy and the bonding that can tr transcend everything. To make sure I made that point. So yeah, if you're if you're being being asked me in a relationship which is which is sex only, unless it's all you want, I would walk away, because you have you deserve you are able to have and you are worthy of having a much healthier relationship beyond that. So again, sex and love confused. Watch this broadcast and explain what the differences are, um, and also what you can do about it. I think that's about it. I've given you enough feedback and thoughts for the afternoon. Um, this is my daily broadcast, by the way. If you haven't seen me before, I do do these every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time, pretty much every day, unless I'm somehow in other events. Um, if you want to get help, I'll leave a link in the comments so you can reach out to me for a discovery session if it's something you're really challenged by. Um, also, I did launch, and I'll put a link in the comments for this because I mentioned it right at the beginning, um, that I've got a new course that's launching next week or coming home to yourself. And you're welcome, Catherine. Thanks for watching. Um, coming home to yourself is a new course I'm launching at the end of next week that is a um, journey into self support, self love, self appreciation self-care, self-confidence, self-everything. So if you're feeling yourself a bit out of whack with, whack with yourself and you want to get connected, this will help you with that. So I'll put a link in the comments so you can check it out for yourself. No pun intended. Um, <laughs> and also put a link in there for discovery sessions so that we can reach out to me for a conversation. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, as I mentioned. This is on Facebook Live, so if you're watching me personally, it's on my, is my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then they go onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to the channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. If you want help, watch my broadcast. If you want more help, reach out to me. And I hope this makes some sense. If you have any questions or comments or thoughts about this, please put them below in the comments and I'll respond when I sign off. If you want to share it with anybody, please do so. And um, I think that's it. I appreciate you watching as always. And thanks for the love and the comments and the interaction. That always makes it more fun. And with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my own channel. Let's say right, same time, same bat channel. Um, so thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.